Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Holmes Movies Podcast. My name is Anders Holmes, and I am a filmmaker living in Copenhagen, Denmark. With Halloween just around the corner, I wanted to talk about all things horror, and particularly talk about the horror films that made a particular impression on me in the time that I was growing up. Mainly the films that were made between 1990 and 2009. When I look back at it now, horror in the 90s was a really interesting time. By this point... You know, horror was practically dead. No one was really making them. I mean, there were films that were being made like Candyman and a few other ones like Peter Jackson's Brain Dead or Dead Alive, depending on which country you're in. It just seemed like no one was really interested. And it wasn't until the mid part of of the decade that people were actually wanting to see more films. Like it got a big boost around 1996 when Wes Craven's Scream came out. And then you had all these other movies that came afterwards. You had all these basically scream imitators like I Know What You Did Last Summer, Urban Legend, Valentine, uh, Cherry Falls, all those films that came out in that time, all basically, you know, following the same sort of uh, guidelines that Scream did, much in the same way like all those films that came out after Halloween, My Bloody Valentine, Friday the 13th, The Prowler, uh, Prom Night, Terror Train, they were all following that those guidelines and, you know, they were cheap to make and they had young actors in them and some of them went off to have much better careers once those films were done. Like, it really got a huge boost. Now, for this episode, I wanted to talk about my favorite films between 1990 and 2009, but because I had such a hard time trying to put 20 films into a list, I decided to increase it to 25, which was a little bit easier because there were a lot of other films that I feel were worthy to talk about and ones that I admire and I feel stand out and I actually really enjoy. And one of the things I found out when I was going through all those films from that that period was they were all really fun movies. They were all really fun to watch. They were scary, fun, entertaining, just what you want when you go to the movies to see a film like that and you know they had a particularly great appeal and also they had a really cool young cast of actors most of them like I said have gone off to do better things and some of their careers have really just skyrocketed like you you know I feel like they wouldn't be here if it weren't for those movies like you know Johnny Depp his first film was Nightmare on Elm Street he's like like ate eaten by his bed and that in his career has like skyrocketed now the first 20 films i'm going to talk about they are basically in a random jumble i couldn't really decide which one was better than the other but the top five those are my favorite films and those are the ones are films i would definitely take to my desert island if i could So, at number 25 is Dead Silence, directed by James Wan. James Wan reunited with Lee Whannell, who wrote the screenplay for Saw and also starred in the film as Adam and then wrote Insidious and Insidious 2, and he directed Insidious 3 as well. And this was their second film that they did. And Dead Silence wasn't a particularly popular film with audiences or with critics, but I have to say, it really just showcased how good of a director James Wan is and how good he is at making horror films. Like, he really understands the genre and really just takes the time to actually really drag out a very tense and creepy atmospheric story. Like, this film genuinely freaked the crap out of me when I first saw it, when I was like, I think I was 14 or 15 when I first saw it, and I... I've hated Ventriloquist Dolls ever since. It's really good film. Very underrated. I would definitely recommend that film to anybody who is a fan of James Wan or horror films in general. At number 24 is Urban Legend, directed by Jamie Blanks. This was one of the more popular of the post-Scream slasher films that came out. And it was actually quite a very decent film, I have to say. It was really, really good. Its central mystery is quite gripping and it keeps you entertained and keeps you very engaged with the story and the cast is really cool you got alicia witt you got jared leto you have rebecca gayhart who is fantastic in the film and you also have got robert fucking england in the movie freddy krueger himself playing a, a teacher of urban legends and all that stuff i think that is awesome and then you have brad dorff who plays chucky from child's play uh who cameos at the beginning of the film and probably uh one of the uh, one of my favorite uh, openings to, to a horror film. It's really, really just a, a, an awesome scene. At number 23, we're going into space with Event Horizon, directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Like Dead Silence, Event Horizon is an extremely underrated film. It wasn't particularly successful at the box office. Not many critics dug it. And it's really hard to understand why. It's got a great cast. You got Lawrence Fishburne, you got Sam Neill, 
two great actors of their generation just hamming it out in space on this very creepy spaceship that's just, you know, shown up after seven years being off in God knows where and it's brought back something entirely demonic and un- inhuman. The filmmakers basically took the haunted house genre and just projected it into space and it's very, it is spine tingling and it's bloody as hell and I have to say it's quite a hard watch in certain scenes and it's pretty disturbing and Sam Neill uh, who's one of my favorite actors he gives a terrific performance in it and he really is one of the standouts in it as well as Lawrence Fishburne and then you have Jason Isaacs as well and all these great British actors from uh, who were very popular at that time it's a really really uh, underrated film and definitely check it out at 22 is another post scream slasher film I know what you did last summer like I know what you did last summer is actually a pretty decent film I think one of the negative aspects of the film is um, Jennifer Love Hewitt's character from watching the film quite a few times she doesn't exactly have all the elements that would make up the final girl she spends quite a few moments of the film running around screaming and she doesn't really particularly defend herself and she kind of relies on her boyfriend to come in and help her she isn't particularly the strongest final girl because the final girl is the person who fights against the evil at the end of the film and comes out triumphant after all her friends have been butchered by a mass killer and I don't think she particularly embodied that I think it would have maybe been better if they switched it over to Sarah Michelle Gellar but I don't know I'm not the uh, writer or the director on that film so I probably wouldn't have had a, a, I couldn't make any decisions on that at number 21, we have The Descent, directed by Neil Marshall. The Descent does for cave diving what Jaws did for going swimming in the ocean. Like, no one will go cave diving or cave hiking or whatever after seeing this film. It's so claustrophobic. It's so dark. It's so bloody. You, there's no escape in sight for the girls who are trapped in this cave and being attacked by these scavengers or cave dwellers or whatever they're called. I can't actually remember what the names are. But it is a really, really just a thrill ride into darkness. It's a really, really good film. And it's hard to see why Neil Marshall's career has kind of gone down a little bit. Like, he's a really good director. Like, he's fantastic at just scaring the crap out of you. And also, he's, his films just showcase some really cool, bloody special effects. But he's done pretty well on TV, having directed a couple episodes of Game of Thrones and also, I think, an episode of Hannibal. Like, he's had a much more successful career in that regard but it'd be nice to see him uh, do another film at some point at number 20 we have drag me to hell directed by sam raimi now this is the first proper horror film from sam raimi since army of darkness this is a real return to form form after directing the toby Maguire spider-man films a lot of the time in the movie you are frightened by this demon that's trying to take care of uh, alison loman and you you barely see anything of it you see little flashes you see shadows and i think that's such an effective thing that you don't see the monster entirely like in jaws you don't see the shark until like the last few minutes of the film in alien you barely see the the monster at all and in cat people directed by jacques Tourneau, you don't see anything you just hear sounds and everything and it's just so effective and i think that was such a smart thing to do and it's a really 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 good film and i think i would love to see Sam Raimi do more films like that. Number 19, we have The Devil's Backbone, directed by Guillermo del Toro. Now, this is a really, really good film. This is one of Guillermo del Toro's best movies, and it's really personal to him. You can really just see his imagination going wild. It's so creepy. It's got terrific performance from the child actors, and it's a really, really great film, and I'm looking forward to his new film, The Shape of Water, which has actually been getting pretty rave reviews at the Venice Film Festival. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing it, seeing it, and it's it looks like to be it looks like it's going to be his most earnest film since Pan's Labyrinth, which just I'm I'm just so excited to see. It. I just love his movies. Guillermo del Toro is just a, a master at his craft. He's one of the best. Number 18 is Audition, directed by Japanese director Takashi Miike. This movie disturbed me so much. I have not been able to see this film since. The last 20 minutes of the film are so hair-raising. It's so hard to watch. You just, I just can't watch it. I'm like this the entire time. I had like a blanket around me the first time. I saw it on my on my uh, computer when I was at school, and my blanket just slowly went around my face during the last few minutes because I just couldn't. It, it was just just 
kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, it just freaks me out every time I watch it. It's just, or think about it. It's just, ugh. Number 17 is Dawn of the Dead. Not George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead, but the one that was directed by Zack Schneider in 2004. Like, the film took the original concept of Romero's 1977 movie, putting a bunch of survivors in a mall during a zombie apocalypse and having to survive, but... And just and, and it just had fun with it. Like the cast is amazing. I know I've said this quite a lot, but like all the films I've mentioned, each member of the cast is fantastic. And this film just had a really sharp script from James Gunn, and it was really well directed. It lacked the kind of political subtext of the original film, but it was a pretty cool movie, and it's more of an action horror film than anything else. And it does have some pretty cool action sequences. And like I said, the cast is very memorable and. It's, it's a very fun watch. It's probably one of the more decent remakes of horror classics that have come out in the last few years. Number 16, Halloween H2O, directed by Steve Miner. Now, this is probably controversial for putting the, that film on this list, but I have to say it's a very good sequel. The Halloween sequels are not great. There's not that many good ones. I think in this sort of slump after Halloween 2 where you got... Return of Michael Myers, Avenge of Michael Myers, The Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, they weren't particularly very good. And then H2O was kind of a reboot. It was released 20 years after the first movie. And it brought back Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. She's a much powerful, she's much more formidable against Michael Myers in this film. She can definitely take care of herself. She's got a real cool Ripley vibe around her. And it's a very slick film it's directed by steve minor who uh directed friday the 13th part two and part three so he's kind of lucky that he's directed in both franchises and he also directed lake placid which is just a bit of guilty pleasure fun <laughs> if anyone's seen that movie so number 15 on the list is john carpenter's vampires directed by oh who was it oh yeah john carpenter now, this was John Carpenter's most successful film to ever come out during the 90s. This was a part of his career where he was kind of done with the film industry. I think he was very bored. He basically said it stopped being fun. He wasn't really having any successful films at the box office. Escape from L.A. didn't do that much. Village of the Damned didn't do that much either. The Mouth of Madness really didn't make any big bucks. But um, the only film that I actually thought, find that's actually pretty good from that part of his career was Vampires with James Woods. Now, this is probably the closest film that he's ever done that's a Western. Like, he's a, like most of his films have a Western quality to them. Some of them do, like Assault on Precinct 13, which is a clear example because it's practically Rio Bravo but set in downtown L.A., and it's a really, really fun movie. It's a very different vampire movie. Like, the vampires are, you know, not romantic. They're not brooding. They're not, like, shining like diamonds like in the fucking Twilight movies. They're vicious, carnivorous creatures. And it's a damn good fun movie. James Woods just looks like he's having a good old fun time working on this film. And it's one of his more funner perform performances. He's fantastic in it. I love James Woods. He's just awesome. Number 14, The Orphanage. This is an exceptionally good film. It is so good. And I was just emotionally devastated by this film and terrified as well. I love a good old haunted house movie with ghosts. And it's just really just brilliantly made. You can really just see a lot of the influences from Guillermo del Toro's movies in this. And the performances are fantastic. And the ending, it just hits you in the gut like i love horror films that can really terrify you and that are really effective but i really love a horror film that makes you feel really emotionally invested in the film that i, I think that's one of the really successful traits of a horror film that you can just really get an emotional feeling from your audience and i think this movie really does that 